everyone heard about Shadow Water Blackout? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. and has. Probably <laughs> in, in samba, not the dance. Is that a dance? Yeah. Not the dance. Different kind of dance? Ash is good at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now. Well, you probably need to define samba for some of the guys. Yeah, I will. I will. Australian samba. Australian samba, yeah. Uh, basically, when you go freediving, it doesn't have to be spearfishing, it could be freediving, it could be static apnea, meaning holding your breath in the, in the pool or in the bathtub. It can be dynamic, trying to cover as much distance as possible. There is a risk of something going wrong, and one of the risks is shallow water blackout. Okay? We can call it blackout because it can happen really in the pool, so it's really shallow. Okay? It can happen on the couch at home also. Okay? But we have to understand the basic principles of what is a blackout, why does it happen, the stages of a blackout, and we'll talk about what you will feel or not feel. We'll talk about what your body will see, and then we talk about what you can or cannot do and what your body can and should do in case of an emergency, sound a blackout, whatever. Okay? So basically, a blackout is losing one's conscious. Okay? It can, it's divided into a few stages, a few different definitions. The first one is samba or loss of motor control. <coughs> it's a partial loss of physical or mental integrity, meaning you get to the surface, and it always happens on the surface as you exit the water, during your first breath, or from then on to, say, 10 to 15 seconds afterwards. I didn't see people blacking out after a minute. But the samba is straight after the dive. You reach the surface, you start breathing, and something happens. Something happens, what happens is that you don't have enough oxygen in your brain. It can happen from numerous reasons, we'll talk about them soon, okay? But you just lose control of your organs. It can be, I'm here, I'm totally here, I can, I can look at judge and say, okay, I'm okay, but my muscles are doing this. Okay, this is a samba, that's why it's called samba. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you didn't think about it before. Samba is this. It can be this, look at my eyes. This was a samba. A millisecond. It can be <laughs> trying to breathe and not being totally able to do it, or trying to take your facial equipment off and like, like this, people that take off their mask and then experience a samba and then like after it's finished okay I re will remove my my mask <laughs> okay it's here so you're not totally there and when you when you're not totally there if you're on the couch or on the chair and you lose this focus nothing happens but if you're in the water and you lose your focus for a second and your face is here and then it's here, then you, the next breath is going to be swallowing water, and this is not good. This is the first stage, samba, okay? It happens 
from the moment you exit until a few seconds afterwards, okay? Uh, it disappears by itself. Most free divers, most people can deal with it by themselves, okay? In 95% of the cases, you're able to deal with it by yourself. In the last 5%, you're <coughs> not, and for those 5%, it's uh, not good lose-lose situation, okay? So you have to think about it every time you go diving and we'll talk about what's going to happen if you <coughs> don't think about it. Second stage is a blackout. A blackout occurs from the moment you surface or even under the water. It can happen at 10 meters, 5 meters. It involves lack of oxygen due to rapid changes in pressure, okay? It happens in the last few meters because the pressure changes most rapidly there. Okay, we won't go into the physiology and stuff. It's for a different time. But, but, the difference, the main difference between a samba and a blackout is that a blackout is a total loss of physical or mental integrity. That means that the diver cannot do anything by himself. Okay? It's like a rag doll. You just lose your conscious and... The next breath that you're going to take, and you will probably take a breath after a few seconds because it's like a reset. Okay? It's going to be a mouthful of water. You cannot hold yourself above the water. So if you look at the samba as a, just a, a reset of the system, then a blackout is just you turn off the power and until the next time someone connects you. Now, a blackout, as I said, you're just relaxed. All the muscles are relaxed, the body is not doing anything. <coughs> if it happens at depth, say five meters, and you're spearfishing, and you have lots of weights on you because you want to be negative at five meters or seven meters, I don't know. Yeah, that part. Where you fish, then if at five or six meters you relax your muscles, means that you relax this muscle also, <coughs> and then you exhale. When you exhale, you become negatively buoyant. You start sinking. You start sinking. The pressure increases because you sink. Water enters the lungs. You drown. Not a good way to die. OK? You have to have someone with you in order to cope and to deal with it. OK? Third way, third part of losing consciousness is a severe blackout. 
it happens at depth usually greater than uh, five, six meters. You black out at about 10 meters because you went way over your limits. You go down, you get entangled with the rope, you shoot a fish, you start pulling, you start trying to pull him, to pull him up, and then you finish your oxygen stores before you get to 10 meters. You're hypoxic. You get to 10 meters, you black out, you continue going up, you have less and less oxygen, and then what you see is this. People are convulsing, okay? It's not this, it's this. The diver, of course, will not reach the surface by himself. He will exhale, start sinking. When you take him up, he will be totally cramped, okay? Jaws locked, eyes rolling, blue in the face, blue in the lips. Okay, and unless you do something radical, something very precise, very quick, then the diver will not regain consciousness, probably, okay? In the first two stages, he will regain consciousness after a few seconds. Okay? So this is the first thing you have to remember. Usually, a blackout ends by itself after a few seconds, as long as the diver has his face above the water. Okay? You have to let air touch his face. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's look at the symptoms and how we deal with them. What you feel under the water. Depending on your dive, depending on the length of the dive, you might feel different things, different sensations. I heard today, I won't say who, comes out of the water after a dive and he said like, I finish the dive, I start breathing, I feel good, I feel uh, euphoric, <laughs> okay? I define it as I see a train passing in front of my eyes, like this white thing. <laughs> Suddenly like, it's, it's very nice. It was a very good dive, but it's not really a good dive. Because this is the stage where you're on the edge of something. <laughs> it's not nice. Okay? Blackouts usually occur above the water. Sambas usually happen because you breathe improperly. Okay? You exit the water and what's your first instinct? <laughs> you do this. You don't have air in the lungs. You don't have oxygen in your lungs. It's the end of the dive. And then oxygen is basically sucked from the blood circulation into the lungs. And the next thing that happens, you don't have blood in you. You don't have oxygen in the brain. And then you don't remember anything. OK? So you reach the surface, you breathe in correctly, and then you feel this sensation. It can happen even before. If you did a dive which, was, which exceeded your limits or was close to your limits, you might feel burn here, which is not bad, by the way. It's lactic acid buildup. It means that your body worked during the dive, OK? You might feel, I heard people saying, I saw, I kept seeing a certain picture that I saw on the bottom. This is what happened to me. Once in my life, I had a samba. This was during an experiment we did in order to check whether a certain kind of warm-up induces a samba. It did. You <laughs> <laughs> passed that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I went diving with a friend, and we did some warm-ups and a dive, which was supposed to be a very easy dive, and then he did a samba. And then the, that's, that's not logical. You did just a 42-meter dive, touch and go. It was supposed to be very easy. <laughs> just, yeah, because we were diving a bit deeper then. And a day, a day later, I said, like, okay, I will try the same warm-up. And I remember coming up, and I remember seeing those two fish fighting at the bottom. It was true, really. And then I come up, and at 10 meters, I still see those two fish fighting at the bottom. <laughs> it's very clear in my head. And I, and I tell myself, okay, you're not here. You're totally disoriented. I'm working. I know I can reach the surface, but I feel something not good. So I reach the surface. I grab the boy. I have my body with me, of course. I see him coming to me. I look at him. I see him coming to me, and then I see him smile. And I'm like, whew, that was close to a samba. I said, like, 
close. From what side? <laughs> was I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I lost this point. But you can remember what happens, okay? You can remember going up, you can remember everything, and still have a samba. It's, it's lost time, okay? You might feel uh, the taste of iron in your mouth, okay? You might feel tingling in your peripheries, toes, hands, lips, okay? Heat here can be a symptom or a sign, not a symptom, but a sign. Was that heat? Heat, you just yeah. feel heat here. This is symptoms for samba? Yeah, samba or a blackout, just okay. before. Some people don't feel anything. Not necessarily the symptoms. Okay? Above the water, what the body will see is either this twitching or uncontrollable, uncontrollable movements or shaking or problems to breathe or not being able to support yourself. Okay? What do you do? As a free diver experiencing these problems, you have to think about two things. One, are you alone? And if you are not alone, if you, if you are alone, what you do, and if you're not, it's a bit easier. If you are alone, you shouldn't be alone, okay, anyway, to begin with, you're not diving alone. But if you are alone, then you can consider dropping your weight belt. Yep. Are you diving with or without a snorkel? With, with. With a snorkel here, usually? Mm -hmm. Consider either removing the snorkel, holding it in your hand, or emptying the snorkel in this technique, you know? You know this one? Yeah? yeah, yeah. Just before you reach the surface at about two meters, just do like this. A bit of air inside the snorkel, and when you reach the surface, just do and start breathing. Okay, the first breath has to be very relaxed. And if you try to empty a snorkel like this, when you're on the edge of the samba, you will have a samba. Okay? You will, for sure. If you are without a snorkel, lean back. When you reach the surface, open your hands, open your feet, like Charlie Chaplin. Okay? You'll be much more buoyant. Okay? And lie on your, lie on your back or just put your snorkel and lie, lie flat in the stomach. No movements. No talking, no shouting, I shot a big fish and now I'm <laughs> exhausted, I come to the surface. Come and I you lose your gun, you lose everything. And just, uh, I saw these things happen. Okay, so it's not nice. shouting, no calling. Take a few seconds, a few breaths, good breaths, to regain consciousness and control before you start doing other things, okay? If you have a body, a body, and, and he's with you, and he sees these things happen, what do you do as a body? As I said, the first thing you have to understand is that usually, or 99% of the cases, a samba ends after a few seconds by itself. You don't have to punch no one unless you're really angry at him. Okay, you don't have to pour water on him, nothing. Hold him above the surface. If it's a samba, it happens above the surface. Hold him above the surface. Wait for a second, two seconds. 
if he doesn't regain consciousness, remove his mask. Do not throw it, because after five seconds, he will ask for it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so put it on your hand. He will punch you. He will punch you in a few Okay? Put it on your hand. Okay? And then, keep holding it. Next step, if he doesn't regain consciousness, talk to him. Do not shout. Do not scream. Because he's this close to being conscious. And if he will hear, WAKE UP! He will just fall back. Okay? He's close. He can hear you, and he will respond to what you say, even though he's not conscious totally. And if you tell him, breathe slowly, he will breathe slowly. And if you tell him, breathe through your nose, which is sometimes easier than through the mouth, after you <coughs> lost consciousness, he will do that. Okay? But most of the cases, you won't even have to. He will regain consciousness, and he will not remember a thing. If he lost consciousness, totally, a blackout, a shallow water blackout, same thing applies. First of all, if you are alone, pardon my French, you're fucked. Okay? Because you cannot assist yourself if you lose consciousness under the water. Unless you drop your weight belt, and then you can hope to float like this instead of like this. If you have a buddy, you notice the first thing you will notice is someone stop kicking. And many free divers, including me, stop kicking on the way up. You just glide on the way up on the last few meters. Yeah, but if some, someone stops gliding at 10 meters, and you see it's not like, okay, I stop gliding, but it's like, I want to bring a movie, but I don't have it. Next time, you'll have it. Someone, you, 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 can, you can notice it easily. It just stops moving. Grab him as fast as possible. It's not like in scuba that you have to come from behind and secure the airways and open the airway because you're holding your breath, so it's no problem. You just have to prevent water entering. So as long as he's on the way up, moving upwards, he will not swallow water. Even if he's exhaling, he will not swallow water. If he stops and starts sinking, he will swallow water. And then it will be much harder for you to, to act. Okay? Catch him. If you catch him from the front and just push him up, his head will tilt forward and he will not have air in the lungs. If you catch him from the back and you just pull him up, it will be like this. Not good. Okay? I just. A few months ago, there was a competition in Egypt. I saw someone blacking out at 22 meters. The deepest blackout I've seen in my life after an 85 meter free immersion. And they were bringing him up, panicking. I was totally shocked that he was alive afterwards. It was two, two deep water blackouts, one after the other, one at 17 meters and one at 20, 22. The first one took them maybe a minute and a half to recover him. You reach the surface, you float the person, remove the facial equipment, the mask in this case probably for you, put it on your hand. If you have to remove the weight belt, remove the weight belt. Okay? It's more important than uh, anything else. Um, talk to him. Breathe, breathe, breathe. If he does not start breathing after a few seconds, 10, 15 seconds, try to open his airway. He will be relaxed, so you can open his airway and you can give him mouth to mouth. One breath usually solves everything. Okay? Yeah. 
um, I've read in some places that it's also a good technique to blow air over their eyelids. And yeah. that might not o not well. only over the eyelids, anywhere else. Anywhere else. Perfect. Usually, if you're in the ocean, out in the ocean, the wind is enough. The wind is usually enough. The face is wet. The wind is usually enough. If not, you can hold him, blow, breathe, breathe, breathe. Okay, if not enough, open the airway. Okay, that's correct. If he regains consciousness, good. If not, evacuation. You <coughs> give him mouth to mouth and recover to the boat. And over there, perform CPR if necessary. Usually you don't have cardiac arrests and stuff in free diving. If it happens, then it's usually more than just a blackout. Okay? Third part is severe blackout. If someone really blacks out under the water, you will reach the surface, he will be spastic, remove the mask, breathe, blow air <coughs> if needed, and usually it will not solve anything because he's totally blocked. You will not be able, even be able to open his airways. This is from experience. I was struggling with someone for a good few seconds. And the only way to do it is instead of mouth to mouth, it's mouth to nose. To nose. Okay? If you, if you are more than two people, then one is supporting, one is performing the mouth to mouth. Okay? After a blackout, after a samba, after a sh uh, severe blackout, you do not dive the same day. Yep. Dive, the day is finished, even if it was your first warm-up dive. Okay? Yep. You do not dive after a blackout or a samba at all. Okay? The same thing can happen in a swimming pool. The same thing can happen in dynamic. And bear in mind, more people died in dynamic disciplines, training, than in depth because it's so shallow and people push it so much. So just remember, if you're training, train correctly, train wisely, train with the body that knows what he's doing and what to do in, in case something happens to you. Okay? And ask questions. If you don't know something, if you don't understand something, ask questions. That's why you have these meetings here. It's important to have meetings. You're lucky. Questions? <coughs> um, what do you do if water enters their lungs? Yeah. Or if they're not responding? It's a problem. If water enters lungs, it's drowning. If, as long as water didn't enter the lung, it's called near drowning, and it's much easier. If water penetrates the lungs, and, and you manage to regain the diver's consciousness, okay, with mouth to mouth or whatever, uh, he has to go to the hospital. Okay, if there is any chance of water entering the lungs, he has to go to the hospital. Because then you have um, secondary. secondary drowning. Okay, you have salt water in the lungs, it pulls in water, and then a day later, the person dies in the hospital or at home when he goes to sleep. Okay, it happens a lot for people that drown in swimming pools. They said, hey, it's, it's okay, it's okay, I'm okay. And then a few hours later, the airways are blocked. Mm. More questions? Yeah. So it's recently I've been diving to say 10, 15 meters and I continue spearfishing. I get the tingling or the numbness in my left hand. Yeah. Get out of the water or what, what do you suggest? <coughs> change the way you dive. Mm -hmm. Change the rhythm, change the length, reduce the length of the dive, reduce the depth of the dive, change your warm sequence. I don't know what caused it, so I cannot tell you what to do. But you have to understand that there are things. Blackouts can be, um, you can have a mental blackout, okay? Not even physical. I know someone that could do 29 meters easy with a long, long, long breath hold at the bottom. But every time you try to do 30 meters touch and go, it would black out, it would have a samba comes up, <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Every time for a month. Because he had a problem here. So it can be the same. Mm -hmm. You have to understand what caused the problem. 
Okay, causes for blackouts. First one is hyperventilating, okay? Hyperventilating, you all know what it is. Breathing fast and deep breaths, okay? If you breathe before the dive and you start feeling tingling before the dive, do not dive. Wait until it's gone. Breathe mm. slower breaths. You don't have to breathe the whole volume of the lungs every time and strong because you're not used to it. Okay, a bit less. Second, improper exhalation after you surface. A very, very big effect on the way you continue. You have to exhale passively. This is exhaling actively. This is passively. And then a good inhale. And then again, do not Straight away start feeling this. Do not extend your limits, okay? Do not go over your limits. If you are experiencing uh, contractions at the bottom, this is contractions. The urge to breathe, the urge to swallow, and then you start feeling the chest con contracting. If you feel this happening to you under the water at 10, 15 meters, go up, okay? Good. It's No, it's, it's still not dangerous. I know people that have it on the <coughs> way down at 50 meters, and they continue, continue to 80. Then come up clean. If I have two contractions on a 70 meter dive, I'm like, <gasps> I have contraction <laughs> on the way up. <laughs> <laughs> different from person to person. <laughs> okay, but usually as, as a rule for yourself, as spear fishermen, you don't want to go into contractions. It's not for now to talk about the physiology of why it's, why it's not good. Yeah. Trust me. Um, <laughs> not necessarily because of the blackouts, because it will make your dive much better if you don't. Is hyperventilation only quick breaths or also long and uh, deep breaths? Is Every that breath simple? basically that is longer than usual reduces the amount of carbon dioxide which is hyperventilation. But you can do it, okay, as long if it's slow enough and you don't start feeling these things. Don't push it to like, this is okay, so I will do it faster and see if this is okay, yeah, I'll do it a bit faster, and then no, this is not good, so I'll go back a bit. Breathe as relaxed as possible it will give you the best results. It's called uh, operational breathing. It doesn't have to be aggressive. When you dive, you try to be as relaxed as possible, right? And if you <laughs> before a dive, you're not relaxed. You scare all the fish. <laughs> okay? There are many other factors that can create, that can cause a blackout. Anxiety, sudden movements. You perform a very bad duck dive. You consume tons of oxygen. You perform a very bad turn at the bottom. For fishing, it's a bit different, but you're down and you want to go up. Instead of pushing yourself, you start doing these things with your legs. You consume lots of oxygen, okay? You kick down slowly. You kick up quickly. It's something that Spiros do a lot. You change the rhythm. You change something in the computer here. It's a greater risk for Blackout. Everything that is not planned from before increases the risk of a blackout. So, okay, fishing is nice. It's fun. It's amazing. But you have to plan and you know what you're doing. Otherwise, it becomes an extreme sport. You have a gun in your hand. So it's an extreme sport with a gun in your hand. Why is spear fishing like bankrupt? It's extreme sport with a gun in your hand. Anything else? Okay, that's great.